Hello guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. Well, you guys and girls pretty much voted this topic the highest, so I'm making this video. In this video, we are gonna go over SNS, SQS and Lambda. We are gonna go pretty deep, the differences between SNS, SQS, the differences between standard queue and FIFO queue, and different use cases, and what are some things that you should think about when you are designing using SNS, SQS and Lambda. All right, we have a lot in our plate, let's get started. What is SNS? Amazon SNS, a simple notification service, is a highly available, durable, secure, fully managed PubSub messaging service. So how does PubSub works? So let's say you have a system, system A, publishes a message to a topic under SNS, and there could be multiple subscribers. Subscriber A subscribes to this topic, so anytime a message comes, subscriber is gonna get the message, and in this case, it's gonna trigger an email. There could be multiple subscribers, subscriber B for SNS, subscriber C can fire a AWS Lambda. So what are some of the advantages of SNS? It scales automatically. If the number of messages increase, SNS under the hood will automatically scale up. It can keep messages secure using AWS KMS keys. Messages can go to different subscribers based on fields in message. So if I go back to the previous diagram, and let's say you want to send specific message to subscriber A, specific messages to subscriber B, specific messages to subscriber C, based on particular fields inside the message, uh, you can do that using SNS message filtering. So I have a full video on that. I'm gonna link it up top if you want to uh, take a look at that. And the biggest advantage of SNS is you can create fan out architectures. What does that mean? Same message can be consumed by multiple consumers. So what is SQS? SQS, our simple queue service, is a fully managed message queuing service. So in this case, system A puts a message in a queue. This queue belongs to Amazon SQS. And then you can trigger a Lambda from this SQS and process the messages. There are two kinds of queues. One is standard queue and another one is FIFO queue. So what are some of the differences between standard and FIFO queue? Uh, standard order is not guaranteed. Uh, FIFO queue are fast in, fast out, as the name suggests, order is strictly preserved. Uh, for standard queue, messages may be delivered more than once. We are going to take a look at this in detail, how that can happen. Uh, for FIFO queue, messages follow exactly once processing. Dedupe configuration avoids duplicate message delivery. For standard queue, nearly unlimited messages can be processed per second, so the capacity is much higher. For FIFO queue, currently, uh, you can process 300 messages per second. With batching, it is supported up to 3,000 messages per second. Uh, so we're gonna take a look at the batching as well. Uh, for standard queue, since it doesn't have to guarantee the order, it's still cheaper. Uh, it's 40 cents per million requests per month after free tier. For FIFO queue, it's 50 cents per million requests per month after free tier. So what are some of the advantages of SQS? SQS is reliable. Even after a certain number of delivery failure, uh, it can go to a dead letter queue and you can retrieve messages from there. So this is one of the difference between SNS and SQS. So SNS by default, after number of retries, the messages can get discarded. However, with SQS, uh, you can use dead letter queue for the messages to be retrieved. SQS as well, like SNS, scales automatically. SQS also keeps messages secure using Amazon KMS. But one of the big advantage of SQS is SQS can convert synchronous design patterns to asynchronous. We're going to take a look at this in detail as well. And another big difference with SNS is in SQS, one message cannot have multiple consumers. Once message is processed by one consumer, it gets deleted from SQS. Let's dive a little bit deeper on how messages gets processed uh, because that's kind of important uh, when you design systems. So what happens is let's say system A is putting messages into a SQS queue and you configured Lambda with that SQS. So Lambda has two components. Uh, one is AWS Lambda service. So this is not your Lambda code. This is actually the AWS Lambda service. And then you have your Lambda function. 
This lambda service keeps polling the queue to look for any messages. When this lambda service polling find messages, the lambda service invokes your function and functions reads in batches. So what is this batch thing and how does this work? Let's take a look. So we have our SQS queue. It has bunch of messages. And on the right, we have the Lambda components. Uh, one Lambda service and then your Lambda function. Note the borders, I made it different colors uh, so that it's easier to understand. So the Lambda service is polling for messages and here batch is a collection of messages. And each batch can have up to 10 messages and the total size cannot exceed 256 kilobyte. So in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, five batch of messages and batch size for each batch is six because it has one, two, three, four, five, six. Now there is also a polling limit. So depending on what have you set the concurrency limit for your uh, Lambda function, the Lambda service will invoke that many Lambdas appropriately. Polling limit is greater than or equal to five and less than or equal to lambda concurrency limit. So in this case, let's say we have set the concurrency limit of our lambda to five, corresponding to the five batches. So what's gonna happen is lambda service is invoke five copies of your lambda function. And each copy is gonna get one batch of six messages. And while these five copies of the, your Lambda is processing these messages, the messages in the SQS is invisible to others for a certain period of time. It is called visibility timeout. So now let's take a look at the sunny day scenario. So five copies of your Lambda got invoked, all the messages got processed fine, your Lambda services, okay, everything is fine, so it's gonna go and delete all the messages from SQS, no problem at all. But what if, let's say the copy of your Lambda function, the first copy of your Lambda function, failed to process all of the messages in one batch, and more interestingly, this copy of the Lambda function could process four messages, but fail to process the remaining two in the same batch. What's gonna happen then? Well, let's start with the easy one. So for the first case, all six messages failed. So the Lambda service is gonna revert back all those six messages back to the SQS queue and another copy of your Lambda invocation is gonna pick it up. But what about this batch? This batch has combination of successfully processed message and failed to process messages. Well, what's gonna happen is AWS Lambda service is gonna revert all six messages. So this is the important thing to remember. Lambda service rolls back entire batch if one or more message fails. So in this case, these four messages were successfully processed by this Lambda function, but because there were two failures, this whole batch got reverted. So next time Lambda picks this up, some messages can be reprocessed, right? Because these four messages was processed once, it can be reprocessed again. So when you are using standard SQS, it is important to remember that you should have some kind of mechanism so that your messages can get reprocessed and your systems shouldn't break. But there is another way to avoid this. So, and that's what's generally used in actual real world program. So now note, the icon changed. Instead of Lambda service deleting the message, you can delete the message from SQS using your Lambda code and Boto3 SDK or whatever SDK you decide to choose. So specifically, let's look at the second case because we already know what's gonna happen on the first case. Uh, since everything failed, nothing's gonna be deleted, it will get revert back. But for this case, this Lambda processed these four messages and this Lambda is gonna go and delete the four messages from the SQS and only the unsuccessful messages will be reverted back. 
So next time another copy of the lambda function picks up the messages, it is not going to reprocess the already processed messages, it's only going to pick up these two messages which failed to process. Now let's take a look at a very very useful design for SQS, how to convert synchronous design to asynchronous for high volume traffic. Let's say system A calls this lambda, traffic volume is very high. So this call is the bottleneck. So let's just assume that the rate of messages calling this lambda is higher than the concurrency limit. So this will throttle and in some cases fail. So what are some of the other disadvantages of synchronous architecture? All components of synchronous architecture need to scale together. Scaling is as high as scaling capacity of lowest scalable component. Each component will keep running till the whole chain finishes. So this point is important. Uh, so let's say system A calling an API, API calling a lambda, synchronous chain. So system A will keep waiting till this whole chain of processing finishes. More importantly, if one component fails, uh, let's say this lambda fails, the whole call will fail. This is when it's advantageous to break the synchronous pattern into asynchronous. Instead of the system A calling a lambda directly, or maybe system A calling API calling lambda, system A puts messages into SQS and lambda picks up the messages from SQS and process it. So what are some of the features of a synchronous architecture? In a synchronous architecture, all components can scale separately, right? Because they are independent of each other. If the system A is pumping a lot of messages into SQS, SQS will scale and handle the volume. The lambda does not need to scale up at the same time. It can just pick up the messages at a rate you determine and process it. Retry mechanism available if one of the component fails. Let's say the lambda fails in this case, the whole chain is not gonna fail, right? Because lambda will retry the messages again from the SQS. And this is also handy if you want to control traffic to downstream. Uh, let's say in this pattern, the lambda is calling a database and database can only ha handle up to certain number of connections per second. If the traffic increases beyond that, your database will be bombarded and may throttle or crash. But in a synchronous pattern, you can control the traffic to the downstream system so that all systems can work efficiently. So some of the tips for SQS and Lambda, set function concurrency five or more when you are reading from SQS. Less than five function concurrency can lead to throttling error because Lambda service polling rate is greater than or equal to five. So if you set the actual function concurrency less than that, uh, it has some intricacies that can lead to throttling error. Set the queue visibility timeout to at least six times the timeout of Lambda function and configure dead letter queue to keep messages to be reprocessed. Some food for thought, sometimes, sometimes we get too hung up on synchronous design. Think through it. Can you break the synchronous architecture to asynchronous? Uh, maybe the post APIs could be asynchronous, get APIs could be synchronous. Another useful use case for this is, uh, let's say very high volume is traffic is coming to uh, Amazon S3, and then you are triggering a Lambda from this S3, and in this Lambda, you are processing the message as well. So again, this Lambda has to keep up with the rate of messages coming in and can lead to throttling or error. So a better architecture could be high volume traffic, putting it into S3, this S3 triggers a Lambda, but this Lambda does not process anything. This Lambda just puts the messages into Amazon SQS and then another Lambda does the processing of those messages. And the last design I want to go over is a combination of SNS and SQS and it is used quite extensively in real world scenario. Uh, so when you want to fan out your messages at the same time, uh, you want to make the message delivery reliable. Uh, so what, ha what you do is you publish your message to SNS topic and then depending on the message filtering, you send it to different SQS queues and then trigger different lambdas and process those messages. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you like this video, 
please click that like button, smash it if you are into that kind of thing and subscribe. Alright, I will see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye!